Hey, good evening, Eagle family. Welcome to Wednesday night worship and prayer. Thanks for inviting us into your living rooms or kitchens or maybe with the sunshine and the slightly warmer weather, maybe it's turned into a little bit of a backyard barbecue gathering or something like that, but welcome to Wednesday night. And to get us started tonight, uh, it's been a tough day for uh, the Eagle family in our immediate kind of church circle. This is the first time, at least that I'm aware of, that we've had a COVID-19 passing and so uh, as we get started tonight, I just want to bring you in the loop on what's happened to Letitia Garcia's family. So Gabriel and Letitia, it's Letitia's brother, Jose Luis Gar- Garcia, who passed away early this morning. Uh, about four weeks ago, he was diagnosed with COVID-19, and uh, doctors have been working uh, around the clock trying to help. There were some positive signs along the way, but uh, yesterday was a really tough day, and he didn't make it through the night. So Gabriel, Letitia, uh, we love you, Uh, we're thinking of you, and if you remember, it was Letitia's sister this past fall. She lost her 21-year-old nephew. So the waves of grief and loss uh, that are washing across the Garcia family, um, just really, a really difficult time. Uh, We're rejoicing that uh, Jose Luis knew the Lord, and Letitia said he had a really strong relationship with Jesus, so we're rejoicing that his physical suffering is over. And, um, but let's just, as we gather tonight, um, recognizing what's happening kind of all around the world, certainly all around our, our nation, and now very close in our own community. And I thought about uh, the, the ending words in Psalm 62. It says, one thing God has spoken, two things have I heard, that you, O God, are strong, and that you, O Lord, are loving. Let's pray together. Jesus, tonight uh, we just pause and unite our hearts and we lift up the Garcia family to you. We call out on behalf of Jose Luis's wife, Sophia, and their four children. Lord, we call out for a ministry of comfort and peace and strength that you would demonstrate just what Psalm 62 says. Demonstrate your love and your strength to them presence of the Holy Spirit carrying along through their grief, and then help them as they begin to plan a a memorial service, as difficult as it is in these circumstances, uh, would you draw near and guide and direct, and pray for Letitia, I pray for her and the role she has in her family, the way she's a light, and help her in her own grief, and then help her be a comfort to others. And Lord, just reminds us in praying, just the ripple effect that happens just in a few days. Um, thinking about our Paschal mystery and Paschal journey and as we continue to put our feet with yours and crucifixion and resurrection in the 40 days. Would you use our time tonight to help us continue to grieve whatever losses we've experienced, big or small, expected or unexpected, and adjust to our new reality. We offer this praise and worship to you. And we want to lift up our eyes now, like Psalm 121 says, to lift them up to the hills and know that our help comes from the Lord. We look to you. In Jesus' name. Lift 
our eyes above the hills in love you keep the wandering shelter of endless love shade from the raging sun of the heavens in all of our days all of our praise faithful one matchless one you are light in the dark now and forever ancient of days worthy of praise Holy One who was and is to come, light of the world, now and forever.
darkness now has ended in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of light forever under your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my And over every heart There is no higher name Jesus, you reign above it all On the cross the work was finished God, you poured out your life Just to give us new life of the forgiven hear an anthem arise cause Jesus you're alive you reign above it all you reign above it all over the universe and over every heart there is no higher name Jesus you song sing hallelujah to the everlasting one there is no higher name jesus you reign above it all you reign above it all running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave now seated alone in glory enthroned on the highest praise you sent the darkness running of an empty grave, now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise. You sent the darkness running out of an empty grave, now seated alone in glory, enthroned on the highest praise. You reign above it all. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things.
of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you And holy, there is no one like none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me song we could ever sing worthy of all the praise we could ever bring worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you oh we live for you jesus the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever save Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you, oh, we live for you And holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes
again how great is our God how great is our God sing with me how great is our God and all we'll see how great how great is our God Jesus, we lift you high tonight. You're worthy of our praise. Lord, like we sang earlier, uh, we want to build our lives around you. We want our lives to be centered on you. In the mountaintops or in the valleys of life, where we can still say that you are great, that you are good, that you are faithful. Would you help us to see you a little more clearly tonight? And to build our lives a little bit more on the firm foundation in you. Would you incline our ears to your word now as Eric shares? We're so grateful for your presence uh, here in this place and in living rooms and kitchens and wherever people are at right now. Your presence is there. We're so grateful for that. Jesus, we love you. We worship you tonight. Amen. Well, if you've got a Bible near you, open it up to John chapter 10. And I found this uh, little cartoon. I thought we all needed a little lightheartedness to get things going tonight. So uh, this cartoon, (laughs) can you read it okay on your screens there? You see what it says? Like... uh, wait a minute, something feels wrong. And it might bring a chuckle in a cartoon setting, but it was reality in Turkey in 2005. You can Google this story, but 1,100 sheep literally walked off a cliff in Turkey. The first sheep went over, second sheep followed, and then 1,100 total ended up at the bottom of the cliff. The first 400 died on landing, and they created a nice, soft wool landing pad for the remaining 700 who went over. They kind of bounced off the 400 who were there and, and kept living. So it probably, between the cartoon and the story from Turkey, it gives us context to why the Bible uses this metaphor for us as God's people. He says, we as his people are the sheep, and we're directionally dependent on the voice of the good shepherd. And this is what John 10 is speaking about. We're going to look at one sentence tonight out of verse 27. Jesus says this, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. If you've got your Bible open, I want you to circle listen, know, and follow. And I want you to see the link between these three verbs. I want you to see how the the listening kind of opens up the knowing and fuels the following. Do you see that? Or you could reverse it if, if you come into tonight and you're struggling a bit with the following, it might be pointing to some gaps in the knowing, which might be still pointing to a breakdown in the listening. Because Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. They listen, and then they follow. So there's this listening, knowing, following connection. And as a sheep, we're so directionally dependent. And I'm not, uh, I don't have much background on the sheep herding and all of that, but when you read about the role the shepherd has today with the sheep, And in Jesus' day, first century 
you know, Israel, Palestine area would have been a very common practice for the shepherds to come near a large grazing flock of sheep. And simply by calling out the voice of the shepherd, the sheep would be drawn to them. They're, they know their voice and they follow accordingly. And I want us to reflect just for a couple minutes tonight on the role of God's outdoor voice and indoor voice. You know God has an outdoor voice and indoor voice, right? When you think of 1 Kings 19, the backdrop there is Elijah. He's just come off of a mountaintop experience and he's headed to a cave and he's in this cave and he's really struggling and he's wrestling with God and there's an earthquake and there's a wind and there's a fire and it says God didn't come earthquake, wind, and fire. He came in a still small voice. And I want you to think about like, do you remember growing up? Do you remember growing up when we used to like go outside and run around our neighborhoods and play? Like, kids, if you're listening, moms and dads, like, we used to, like, when I'd come home from school and mom would have a chore list and get the chores done, have my homework, get my homework done, and then I'd just head out into the neighborhood, like, for hours and hours, and we'd just be, you know, running around Ninth, North Ninth Avenue West in Newton, Iowa, and creating neighborhood mischief, and many of you have heard all those stories before, skipping rocks and creating huge bicycle ramps and jumping and, you know, playing in the creek and all kinds of things. I mean, this is what we did. And then along the way, one of our kind of neighborhood group, his name was Richie, and Richie's mom, when it was time to come in, Richie's mom would stand on her front porch in the neighborhood, and she would bell her out. She had the set of lungs on her, could just project her voice all through Ninth Avenue and say, Richard, Shane, it's time to come home. It was an outside voice. And I know my brother and I remember, you know, when mom or dad would use their outside voice in outside context. We knew, right, when it was outside voice. And maybe during, you know, quarantine type stuff, we've got maybe outside voices being used inside. Some of you know when that's going on, right? But there's a difference between the outside voice in the language of 1 Kings 19, earthquake, wind, and fire, when God comes thundering loudly versus an inside voice, the gentle whisper, when God kind of lowers His tone and He lowers His projection and He comes in a still small voice. And I want you to think about this way now. Sometimes when we're wrestling with wanting to hear God's voice, we, we want to trust our good shepherd. We know we need guidance. Lord, what are you doing in this particular time that we're all living in? What are the new pastures the good shepherd is leading us in? Man, I've been so challenged about, Lord, I just want to be so uh, sensitive and aware and in step with your voice. There's so many other voices and so much noise. What's the voice of the good shepherd saying right now? What are the new pastures you're leading us into? I want to be in step with that. And, and if I were honest, I'd, I'd, at times I would say, Lord, could you kind of lift up your voice? Could you make it a little more earthquake, wind, and fire now? Just lift up your voice. Make it a little more outside voice. I just want it so I don't miss it. And in that space, God says, well, actually, right, parents, think about it when we're raising our kids. Isn't a good sign of maturity the ability not to have to be earthquake, wind, and fire at every turn? For those of you parenting young ones, that's a good portion of the preschool parenting stage. It's more earthquake, wind, and fire voice relationship with your kids. It's do's and don'ts. It's setting boundaries. It's, it's trying to keep them from kind of hurting themselves and hurting others. And so you feel like you spend most of your day saying, don't, stop, watch, quit, uh, all that stuff. But a good sign of maturity is, right, it would be an unhealthy relationship. If you're in your later teens, early 20s, and you still have that kind of relationship with your parents, that's, that's a sign of immaturity. A sign of maturity is when the children begin to inhabit the qualities and the characteristics and the values that mom and dad have been attempting to pass on and parent so that they're able to respond to the still small voice, the gentle whisper. And if you notice when you're in a room and someone lowers their voice, what does it cause you to do? It causes you to quiet down, to slow down, and to lean in so you can hear. And I wonder if that's what the Lord's doing. 
collectively. I wonder if we just kind of thrust a spring of 2020. Hey, slow down. Hey, quiet down. The pace, the busyness, the just, just quiet it all down and lean in. Because my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And what is it for you these days? Uh, like what helps you dial in to the indoor voice relationship with the Lord, the still small. What helps you lean in and hear? I know for me, I need to be in the God Breathe book. I know if I can get some good chunk of time just to immerse myself in these pages, especially the Psalms, and then especially in some place of solitude and silence. I need stillness and quiet and silence and the Scriptures. For me, that really helps me be able to kind of Try to get in step with what, where is the voice of the good shepherd leading? What is he saying? And maybe that's part of the transition. Maybe that's part of the maturity, not just individual, maybe collectively. My prayer for us as a church is maybe we come through this as we, we don't just go through it, we're growing through it. What if we were to grow through it, we come out of all of this and say, you know what? We're just a little more dialed in as a church family together on the voice of the good shepherd. And maybe a little less dependent on the outdoor raised voice, earthquake, wind, and fire. Where we're able to lean in and slow down and quiet down and discern what he's saying. On Monday night, uh, some good friends called and they were grieving over some neighbors, Bill and Fran Skaggs. Bill and Fran, if you're listening tonight, uh, thinking of you, we love you. Monday night, uh, Bill and Fran were going about their evening routines, and their four-year-old beagle named Angel just got away from Bill, and she's a runner. And so their neighbors, C.J. Patrick and Crystal Culver, it's kind of a sounded like a little neighborhood community taking care of Angel, and she got away, and unfortunately ran out in front of a car, and the car struck and killed her. And on Monday night, uh, when C.J. and Crystal were calling to let me know. And as I drove over to the street where Bill and Fran, I wanted to go see Bill and Fran. And, and as I pulled up, there's the Boone County Animal Control Officer, there's Crystal, there's CJ. And then as I looked down alongside the road, there's Bill and Fran, and they're kneeling. And they're in this kind of, they had uh, Angel all wrapped up in a little red blanket. And they were just sobbing. And Bill was just stroking angels back there and just whispering. And Bill, that image, it came back to me when I think about John 10 tonight. The way you were whispering. And how familiar angel was with your voice as her owner. Such a great picture of the kind of relationship a good, good father has with us as his children in a time of need. And so, on this Wednesday night, wherever it finds it, we could be in, you know, the kind of grief and loss that the Skaggs family's feeling and on top of quarantine dynamics and then their home's quieter than ever. Could be the degree like the Garcia family and having lost a uh, 48-year-old brother could be some of you receiving news this week about your job and furlough and cutbacks and pay cuts and on and on it goes. And if ever's there been a time, if there's ever been a time, church, when we've needed to slow down and quiet down and lean in, it's these days. Because my sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. Let's pray. Jesus, whatever you're doing in this space and all of our lives, may, may we all be able to point back to something in this area where we just got a little more in step with discerning your voice, hearing, following, knowing you more deeply. 
as we grieve our losses and we adjust to a new reality as we name our deaths and look to claim our births. We want you to know we'll follow you, our good shepherd. We'll follow you. I pray you'd teach us, teach us your ways, dig out our ears to hear you. And if there's some listening tonight who they're in a place where they need to hear more clearly than ever the voice of the Lord saying, this is the way, walk in it. May they hear that tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Before the benediction, just a couple of quick announcements. Um, tomorrow morning, 7 a.m., we've got a prayer meeting for Youth for Christ. So it's a private prayer meeting, so we're not kind of publicly putting out the link because we want it to be a, a good prayer time together, but it's an invite out to anybody. So you need to send an email to help at eaglechurch.com, and then Justin will send you the link to the prayer meeting. Um, pretty sure it's going to be Zoom based. So just be able to jump on a Zoom link. You'll be able to join the prayer meeting and pray for Danny Marquez, Ali King, Clyde Bodkin, and all the great work that Youth for Christ and City Life and Parent Life and all those are doing. So that's tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. Send the email, help at eaglechurch.com. And then would you be praying with me about this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. I think moms deserve a month this year. So it's going to be a great Mother's Day service. We've got some special stuff planned. Would you do me a favor and push out some social media invites and some other electronic invites, send some text messages to some friends, family, neighbors, whomever, and just invite them to join our live stream this coming Sunday. I think it'll be a, a really meaningful service, especially for moms, but for all of us. So, And then we obviously will be together again via screen that way. And I will give some further updates on Sunday. Many of you asking about, hey, what are some next steps for us in the phased-in opening of our state? We'll talk a little bit more about that uh, this Sunday. All right, I want to send you out tonight, benediction from Isaiah 55. Here's a great picture of some of the listening context. Isaiah 55 says, why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. So may the good shepherd, who's always leading his people to good pastures, may he bless you with ears that hear and eyes that see. May he satisfy you in the inmost place for you to discern his voice saying, this is the way, walk in it. Go as his people, you are loved. Peace to you. Amen.